Here we go, my friends. Back to the spread. NFL Week 15, the drive for the playoffs continue. Before we get started, what's on tap today? Can Buffalo stay in the AFC race against Dallas? Huge game in Buffalo. Does Baltimore strengthen their quest for home field advantage this weekend? Can Miami rebound from that ugly, ugly loss on Monday night? And finally, what is happening with the Eagles? Can the birds bounce back this week? Now, who had the sauce this week? Who had the sauce? Torchbearer sauces had the sauce. Accidentally healthy, intentionally delicious. You can put that stuff on anything. Steak, ribs, chicken wings, regular beef, hot dogs, seafood. They got you covered. Go to the website, check it out. You're gonna love their sauces. You're gonna love the artwork on the bottles as well. Super cool stuff. But who had the sauce? This week we're gonna be QB driven. Number one, Brock Purdy. Another week, another great week for Purdy, 368. Two touchdowns, another great win for 49ers. Zach Wilson has made our list. Over 300 yards, two touchdowns, and a great win for the Jets over Houston. And finally, Josh Allen, only had 233 yards, one touchdown. But he was the driving force towards that game-winning drive when they they did the go-ahead field goal. So hats off to those guys who had no sauce last week. (sighs) These guys. The Miami Dolphins on Monday night were up 14 in a game which they played like garbage in Tennessee, definitely wanted the game more, but up 14 with less than four minutes less, and they lost the game. No sauce. And the other teams that's not getting any sauce, the Kansas City Chiefs, Pat Mahomes, Andy Reid, stop crying like schoolgirls. He lined up offsides. Yes, we can all agree, one of the coolest plays of all time. Lined up offsides. End of story, stop crying. Now let's get into this thing. First game, Dallas Cowboys at the Buffalo Bills. Buffalo's a two point favorite at home, over under 50.5. 68% of the public money is on is on Buffalo in this game. So let's start it out. Mr. MVP Dak Prescott, but on absolute fire lately, the last five games. 15 touchdowns, one pick, absolutely incredible. CC Lamb on the air, 1253 in the air, and excuse me, receiving eight touchdowns. Now Dallas thinks they found their next tight end. Next star tight end, Jake Ferguson last week, five of 72. He's really becoming a Dak target. Now the other thing to kind of talk about, has the offense been incredible the last couple of weeks? I mean, the beat down against Philly, but the defense has quietly flown under the radar. You know, we know Parsons is incredible off the edge, but that defense has 39 sacks this year. They're averaging 1.6 takeaways per game as well. So they're playing phenomenal. But for this game, there's three real questions that are coming up. Number one, can they protect Dak on the road? Buffalo has 42 sacks on the season. Their whole defense is predicated on pressure. So can they stop that? Number two, can they get the big critical stops in the second half against Josh Allen when he is money? Third and fourth quarter, breaks my heart to say that being a Dolphins fan, but Josh Allen makes huge plays. The one thing can they do, can they force that turnover that he's known to do in the third quarter Fourth quarter, he's been actually better than good, but he still gets that bad turnover. Can they can they force that? That's the third thing. Coming into the game, Buffalo's plan's very simple. Get Cook his touches early, win the battle of the trenches on both sides of the ball, and limit Allen's mistakes, and they win, and they continue to march towards the playoffs. So if I'm looking at this game, I'm actually gonna take Dallas on the road here. I think they're the, the better team right now. They're the hotter team. As good as Josh Allen has been, minus some of the turnovers, Dak has been even better. So. I think Dak and him are going to go on the road. Give me the points. I think Dallas is going to win outright, but I'll take the plus two here. Next big game, another huge playoff game implications. Baltimore Ravens minus three going into Jacksonville. 80% of the public money is on Baltimore. Jags coming home after a loss to the Flacco. Yeah, Joe Flacco led Browns. But it doesn't get much better for the Jags because they're really three and four at home. And for a team that has played decent over the, you know, for the year, you think they'd have a better record at home, but they are what they are. Currently on a two-game losing streak. With all that being said, though, they're still 8-5. and five, They're first place in the AFC South. What can the Jags do, not only to cover, but to win this game? ETN has to average more than his current yards per carry. He's averaging under 4, 3.7 a carry, especially with Kirk out now. So the offense is sputtering, but ETN can help that. A great running game can help, help any team. Look at the Buffalo Bills. They started handing the ball to Cook more. They've changed. So the same thing here at the Jags. Get ETN, make him the focal point, and just run, run, run. Now, another question I have, man, will the real Trevor Lawrence please stand up? Start playing like the number one pick that you were. Carry the team down the playoff stretch. 
He did it last year in that playoff game. That's why I think the hype was so big for him coming in the offseason. But he just has sputtered. And the, the other thing that the team's going to really need to do, you're going to have to pressure Lamar all damn night. Get in his face. Do what the Rams did last week. Force him to rush his throws. I mean, you saw he had a couple guys wide open, couldn't hit them, or they the ball fluttered up and the receiver ran out under it. That's what they're going to have to do if they have any shot of winning at home. For Baltimore, you know, if Miami's lost Monday night, Baltimore's in the driver's seat now for home field advantage. So for this game, they're going to need a heavy dose of Gus the Bus, Keaton Mitchell, and even though the Jags are fourth against the run, I mean, their, their defense is fantastic against the run, these runs are going to help set up the pass. They're going to help set up those passing lanes. And remember, the Jags are 31st in the league against the pass. The secondary was lost a few, to- few times last week against Cleveland. You saw wide open touchdowns, which is very hard to do in the NFL consistently. You really expect that secondary to bounce back. I actually expect Lamar to bounce back, hit some deep throws down to OBJ, they flowers, and that recently, keep this name, and I'm sure you fantasy guys have it, but that Isaiah Likely is really becoming a huge target for Baltimore. I don't think much going to change here for Jacksonville. I'm going to go with the public on this one. Give me Baltimore minus the three. Really like the pick here. Now we're going into the New York Jets against the Miami Dolphins. Dolphins are fairly like minus eight and a half. Big spread. 63% of the money right now is on the New York Jets public money. So let's go. Let's jump right into it. First and foremost, what an ugly loss Monday night by Miami. Trash city, whatever description you want to give about that game was awful. Now, let me get the excuse uh, gun going a little bit. Miami was down four starting linemen. That definitely showed up on Monday. That line could not pass protect to save their lives. They can run block that game, but on passing downs, they were terrible. Two was forced to rush. He obviously was off his game. Hats off to Tennessee with a great game plan. But Miami should get their left tackle back for Sunday. Armstead will be back. Unfortunately, Williams, their center's out for the year, torn ACL. I don't think Robert Hunt's coming back for guard. So that's where they're at for this. So how does Miami get back on track this Mike McDaniel? Run the damn football. Run the football. Run the football. Last time these two met, Miami ran for 167 yards. And remember, the Jets are 28th in the league against the run. Now, most certain A chain for Miami, they've combined for 1,500 yards rushing the football. 6.1 a carry. 23 touchdowns. Yeah, 23 touchdowns. Run the football. Change your identity. Don't be stubborn. Most of these coaches they and their play callers... They get stubborn, and that's why they end up floundering down the stretch and losing. If Miami does not want to do that, change the identity. Run the football. You got the guys to do it. Now, part of Miami's problem this year in the four games they have lost, they get away from that running game, especially in critical spots, and especially in the red zone. You saw that game the other night. One of the plays, they had three down linemen, and they threw the football in the end zone, and Miami doesn't have any big receivers. So as everybody knows, in the red zone, the field gets smaller, the throwing windows get smaller, so you need to run the football. The big thing is not everything needs to go through Tyreek Hill on offense. He's dynamic, but not everything needs to go that way. Another way to get back on track, QB pressures. Miami needs to come in, they need to pressure Wilson all day, force him to make quick reads and enforce mistakes. Don't let him break tackles. He's very good running. He's actually not a he's not a bad uh, thrower on the run. He's not that bad at all at that. And he, like I said last week, he went for over 300. What a game for him! Now, what a win for the Jets last week was. And Zach Wilson, they literally beat the hell out of the Texans. Let's just be straight up with that. The defense limited C.J. Stroud to only 54 yards. Yeah, 54 yards. He was an MVP candidate before last week. No more. Just a great team win for them. Now, for the Jets to win this game and cover. It's simple. Get the Wilson brothers going early and often. Get Zach Wilson and Garrett Wilson. Get them going. Get the running game going. Now, their offensive line, like I said, last time they played, they killed, uh, was it Tim Boyle? The Dolphins did. Offensive line needs to protect Zach, and that D-line needs to eat against those backups on the Finns' O-line. All that being said, I I think Miami gets back on track here. Now, I know they got a three-gauntlet game after this. They got three teams in a row. It'll be very difficult. I do think they win this game. And I do think they cover. So give me the Dolphins. Uh, give me the minus eight and a half. Here we go. Last game. Philadelphia Eagles, minus three and a half. Going across the country to see the Seattle Seahawks. 74% of the money, though, here is on Philly. Another Sunday, another Eagles beating. Jeez, they got beat up last week. Last two games, Jal- uh, Jalen Hurts, one touchdown in the air. Last Sunday, he threw for less than 200 yards. The offense has no identity at this point in the season, which is crazy to say considering they went to the Super Bowl last year and before this losing streak, they looked like they were finally getting, everything was coming, all the gears were working. That's what I'm trying to say. The secondary of the Eagles has been an absolutely mess, a mess. 
Matchups have been terrible for them. The Cowboys passed all over for them. Also remember the secondary's given up six touchdowns the last two games too. Even with the sky is falling for Philadelphia, this has been a nightmare lately. They're still 10 and three. Think about that. It's been horrific last couple of weeks. They're still 10 and three. So everybody pump the brakes in Philly, pump it, slow it down. And let's just try to think, what does Philly need to do to get this back on track and to win this week? And to cover. Last time Philly won, before this losing streak, they ran for 185. You got to get back to that ASAP and stay on schedule. Hurts, like most quarterbacks, struggle on third and longs. And he's no different. So they've got to run, hey, run first, second down. So much in the NFL, they run first down, they pass second. Run first and second downs, set up short third downs, eat up that clock, get, the, get some confidence back, get Hurts moving, get A.J. Brown down the field, Deontay Smith. That's the way they're going to win this game. Now for Seattle, the game's really going to come down to just a few things. Really simple. Can they play keep, keep away from Philadelphia? Can the running game, can consistent first downs, can they get the time possession in their favor? If they can do that, what's going to open up for them is passes to Metcalf, Lockett. But the problem here is, the problem is Geno Smith's injury. He's coming back from a groin. They still have him as questionable. That's why I got to take Philly here. I don't trust this team. Seattle with Drew Locke. I mean, he's a good backup, but not starting, not against a team that's that they're Desperate for a win, Philadelphia, this week. They need this win. Desperate times. Give me the Philadelphia Eagles. Minus three and a half. Last week, we got killed. This is our redemption tour this week. We went 0-4 last week. But don't worry, we're back to redemption. And now, my friends, as we always say this time, it's easy money. Let's get some easy money going for everybody. And who's our first pick of the week? This one, I think, this is easy. Easy money. Baltimore Ravens, minus three. That's my first one of the week. Baltimore Ravens run to the bank, take it, minus three. The second one I'm going to go with, give me the Philadelphia Eagles, the minus three and a half. So there you have it. I got both road teams out of the favorites. Take them both. Don't look back. And please, do me a favor when you get some time. Like, subscribe. I love everybody on here. I love the comments. I love people calling me out last week. Hey, if you think my picks are bad, fade them. Let me know how you're doing. Let me know your parlays, what you guys are betting this weekend. Anyways, as always, lock them in early, lock them in often. Best of luck to everybody out there. We'll see you at the next one.